Yes, hello and welcome to our brand new show, Freddie and the Eights, where we get to chat all things football with these two, Brad Phil, Andrew Johns. Love to see you both. Lots to discuss with you. <laughs> look at the look on your face. The unknown. Don't worry. Uh, plenty to discuss today. Finals football. We'll preview the two big games this weekend and some tall tales from these two as well. But lots happening in the news world surrounding mm. rugby league. So let's get straight into it. Uh, Melbourne Storm. They've had mm. plenty of halfbacks, Joey. Brody Croft, the latest, in a successful match against the Bunnies. Do they have to stick with him in the finals now? Definitely. Ooh. It's a specialised position. And the biggest turning point of the game, where am I looking, was at half time when he just got the ball. Big right foot step, got in the clear and he kicked long for Vunavalu. That was a big turning point for me in the game. Uh, I thought his kicking game was sound, but he took the line on. He's a natural halfback. This was a big play of the game. What was it? 20 seconds to go, 30 seconds to go, and then backed himself with the kick. And then Vunavalu scores right on half time for him to go in front, and which brings the crowd into it. Mm. It's a big play. He's got to be there. You know what's good? His first kick, he kicked dead. He had a cover. His start wasn't that great. Mm. And he, he bounced back, which was which was awesome. And the fact when he did lead that try, he took on Sam Burgess. Yeah. Whew, that's gutsy. All right, let's move on to our second topic in our Fast Five. Latrell Mitchell, last night, judiciary. Unsuccessful trip. Won't play in the prelim. Mm. Does that end the Roosters' season? I don't know if it ends the Roosters' season. Uh, Mitch Orbison will play in the centres, I'd say. He's a, he's a great player, Mitch Orbison. And on that side will be Dane Gagai. So he's not marking Greg Inglis, which I think is an easier job, just from a size point of view. Uh, but I think you know, Latrell's got to walk away saying that a week's a good thing for that tackle. I just, I just can't see the future in how defenders get themselves in that position to tackle like that. Was he ever a chance at the judiciary, Joey? I think he was lucky to get a week. I think he was really lucky. And in the end, it was only the carry What do we have to do? Do we have to get someone to seriously maim himself, break a neck, before we jump on all over these tackles? Um, then cannonballs, what do they call them, crushers? They're Chicken out, wings. Mm. Out and out cheap shots. Yep. As soon as we see them, on the field, you're gone. Whether it's instant send-off or sin bin, and you get a month. You get, that's the way to stop it. We've got to stop it. There seems to be a spate of them at the moment. Does that mean it's part of the training? You've got three players I don't in the think tackle. It's part it's of it must, like, but it must be. They all get in the same position. They sort of tuck their arms and then come down like a wrestling move. The players, I never saw players now they backing into players. They yeah. do that a lot now. You see players, Aaron Woods does it, of course Josh player, Deegan does it. Well, is, that to get, is that to get away from the wrestling? No, I think what it is, it's because players are getting held up in tackles. Mm. So when you hit the line, players are more inclined to want to hold you up to take time out of the game. Mm. So they hold you, spin you, you know, because that's, that's where you want them to be. You want their head towards your goal on that because mm. they've got to turn to play the ball. So, yeah, it's, ooh, that, it's just bad. Heavier penalties. That's what you have to do to get it out of the game. Years ago when they were brawling, and, you know, when it was the Wild West, and eye gouges. It was big suspensions then, and it stopped it. Panthers Sharks this Friday night for Penrith. The new mm. coach, Cameron Sorrell, though, he's three from five, one from one in finals football. What's he got to do, Andrew, to stay as coach next year? Grand final? Grand final win? No, I don't think it's really on performances. I understand his communication is really great with the players. He has great respect for the players. A lot of these players have come through the junior system where he's coached. I don't know if he's ready to do it week in, week out, and all the pressure of running it. I think still a couple more years as an assistant. 33, is that right? Very young mm. for all that responsibility. Yeah, I think a couple more years as an assistant. But the only person who knows is probably Phil Gould, who's within the organisation. Quick thought from you on Seraldo. You're doing Freddy. a good job at the moment, let's just wait and see. Happy with what you're seeing at the moment. All right, what have we got? 90 seconds left in our Fast Five to kick things off. Uh, does this run from Sean Johnson in that match against the Panthers on Saturday afternoon? Does it, does it sum up the Warriors' season? Getting through, looking all but clear, and then down he goes. I think it sums up the Warriors and the Panthers' season, really. I think they look like they're going to break away every now, and, every now and then, the Warriors, and then they sort of come up with a poor loss, and that's what happened here. He looked like he was under the post. He's so far, Sean Johnson. But, Wunga Blake. And then Wunga Blake, he sort of typifies Penrith here, mm. where you think they're gone, and they pull it out of the, out of the hat. It was Wunga. It's been Wunga on many occasions with the ball and now in defence. I don't know where to look. Like Jim <laughs> the one with the red dot. Know, but You've only been on TV for about I thought it was the one now. next to that. Okay. Uh, and to finish off our fast five, uh, the Broncos out and in stunning fashion, 48-18, Joey, at the hands of the Dragons. Is that Wayne Bennett done despite having a year to go on the contract? Yes. Yeah. Defensively, though. They're going to pay him out. Oh, the biggest club in, the, in Australia. There's no way. I can't see that happening. I think he'll be in another club. 
Right, so he, so he'll be an I NRL coach, head coach I elsewhere. I think he'll be an NRL coach somewhere else. Yeah. Defensively, they were awful. Mm. They were awful. And that's Structurally. His that's his go. Wayne's, Wayne's big on defence. Is that's, he? Yeah, that's his specialty. Mm. Jason Demetrio does the attack. Which club does he end up at? Any you oh. can think of? Cessna. No, I don't know. I think it'll be in another NRL club. But There's well. a bit of talk about the Dragons. Like when I said when Mary was under pressure, you've got to think Mary's not under pressure anymore. No. There's not many other clubs. But you know what it's like, something will happen. All right, time up on your fast five. Uh, plenty more still to come too. We're going to be hearing Joey's story on Wayne Bennett a little later on as well as our finals previews. But in the meantime, it's time for Joey's top five. Up and running, yep. Vision's about to go on the screen, Joey, and it's over to you. Uh, I've, my number five is the refereeing on the weekend. They put the whistle away, the game flowed, the best team won. I got to applaud them. Uh, I thought it was sensational. The game was open. There was a plenty of points. And because of the referees... They let the players decide who wins the game. So they've been under all sorts of pressure this year. So applaud the referees. Uh, this game, the Storm v the Rabbits, the best semi-final I've seen for ages. And don't worry, it set the tone Ooh. for the weekend. All the players who played on the weekend would have been sitting at home watching this, watching the standard of play and going, right, this is what we have to do to win this premiership. Thought it had everything. It had open, fast tries. It, it had. just came off the line fast, didn't it? Just Defense. sensational. It just ripped into Big each hits. other. I think these two will play each other in the grand final. Number three, Addo Carr, game on the line, full pelt, running down the sideline. <laughs> Look at this banana kick. Oh, Beautiful. That's skill that you just can't coach. That's footy learned in the backyard. Look at him, the way he's holding the ball like wow. a little baby. He's holding it like side like on. I've never, seen that. I've never I, seen that before. I actually never saw that in a game. That's the first time I've noticed yeah, it. Sensei. Tarek Sims, three tries. Spoke about what he has for breakfast. Either Vegemite on toast or Wheat Bix. I think he had them all together. He was going nuts. He had Vegemite on Wheat Bix. And the celebration. Oof. Have a look at the celebration. He's a beast. Look at him. He looks like a rock and roll wrestler. Well done, Tarek. And the women's uh, NRLW oh. opening oh. round. Oh. Talking to Freddie before. The skill of the girls. Yeah. Cronulla. Watch the girls. Catch and pass. The ball goes Sweet. in front. I don't know if it's the netball background or the touch footy, but the skill of the girls, also it's pure footy. There's no wrestling, there's none of that rubbish. They get out there and play. So girls, it's a revolution for women's sport, as we know, but for rugby league. Great times for women's rugby league. There's a great weekend seeing the women's premiership uh, kick off. Freddie, your team of the week on the back of Joey's top five. Gee, it's a good-looking one. I've got it in front of me here. I've got a good-looking as in good-looking. Well, yeah, both, Jack. actually. Of... The... Well, Jack DeBellin's not there, so it's not too good. Darth <laughs> Anukin. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> The calendar boy, Dale Finucane. He's your lock, run us through it. Um, geez, it must have been tough to pick out of those 18. Where are we starting? Top of the bottom. The Let's go from 1 through 13. Right, Jay Tedesco uh, set up a couple of tries. The second pass that he threw was an absolute pearl. He was fantastic. Ran for a stack of metres. Vunavalu, a couple of tries as well. The one chasing down Brady Croft's kick was a highlight. The crowd just were off their seats. Nana McDonald. I love Nana McDonald. He's one of my favourite players. He just, he's like a front rower. Also... Got the speed of a winger, comes up with tries, good passes, good player. Chase Blair got the double, scored that great try that we just saw in Joey's top five. Long sleeves. Long sleeves. Yeah. It's, it's like weird. a rush shirt. Yeah. yeah. It's odd. Tyrone Peachy also a couple of tries. I love the Peachy. He was fantastic. Uh, Cameron Munster had his hand in every try. He was outstanding. Then kicked the field goal. Cooper Cronk. Field goal again to win the game. Isaac Luke for the tackle on yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy Maloney. We'll be seeing that later too. He's got Jimmy's ribs on his shoulder. James Graham, I thought he just set the, st the tone for the drag straight away. Just got off the line and just belted blokes. Got himself knocked out as usual. Hargreaves, uh, his second stint was awesome. Yep. They won the game for him. Hell of a team. Uh, your player of the week, though, Felice Cafusi. Right. Yeah, Why don't you say something, mate? Say something. I won't it was, be offended. It was yeah. good to watch. He was brilliant. Um, he played a really key role in the first try, actually, because they used him up as a decoy. And then he got a couple of big plays on Sam Burgess, obviously the one off the kickoff, which you'll see where he just hit up under the ball. Mm, Everything he did, mate, was just... It was like he just went to a different level, actually. I've, I've seen him... He went from a standard of playing 20 minutes. Here's that tackle. Oh. Do you think touching his hair, do you think his hair would be soft or do you think it would oh, be yeah. hard? Soft and, soft and springy, I reckon. Soft. There you go. 
You heard Soft. it here first. This play, uh, Freddie's team and player of the week for week one of the finals. Coming up, we'll be having a, a little look uh, back to 1997. Yeah, I, I never got to say Dalfinuk. No, I mean, well, you mentioned if he's ugly. Oh, right. So, okay. That was Joey. Back I didn't say whatnot. ugly. I no, just said ugly. Just, you wouldn't pass Character. Yeah. Yes. Um, now, a little later, we're going to be doing a 1997 look back. And no, it's not going to be Joey and the Knights winning. Something a little different from that mm. final series and something I'm not too keen on seeing, to be honest. In the meantime, though, our finals preview, Cronulla and Penrith. Where they are, that's the try line up in front of them. And here it is again with Graham. Got a ball away. Oh, it's a try for Becky. Shouts in. Puts a grubber in. There's a chance for Lee. Edric Lee has put it down. Here's down on the tennis. Alessi out busting through the centre. Away to Maloney. They're going to go back to back. Cleary sends it away for Maloney. Here's the one pointer. Maloney steadies and slots it. Yeah, the Panthers getting the job done against the Warriors and the Sharks the same, uh, going down to the Roosters uh, in a grinding affair, 21 points to 12. Look, let's look at their team because there is a bl big blow uh, for the 2016 champions. They, on the back of that loss to the Roosters on Saturday night, now don't have Wade Graham. Scott Sorensen comes in. What do you make of that team, gentlemen, heading into a sudden death matchup? I think it's rock solid. I, like the, I always go to the bench. I like looking at the bench first and see how... See how strong the bench is. Cable, Seguiaro, Woods and Bakuya, I think it's a really good bench and that sort of gives you an idea of what their team's like. Well, Wade Graham went off fairly early in this game. He set up that first try. And they still should have won by three tries against the Roosters. Mm -hmm. So a lot's been made of Wade being not there. Scott Sorensen, really rock-solid player, runs that strong line and just puts extra pressure on Moylan. I thought their right side had some great options. The kicking game... Of of Townsend, but Luke Lewis laid some really nice passes on for Valentine Holmes. I think we're all, um, it's been about the kicks before the game, actually, on those conditions. So they're going to play the Allianz again, and those kicks will be on again. The kicks behind you, bring the winger up, kick it behind you. can't turn. It's so slippery. Mm. So slippery. I just feel they drop their standard a bit when Wade's not there. I don't know why. I just feel like when he's not there, they just seem to score less points. They just seem... Less dangerous. And Joe, you were ripping your hair out in commentary. They had their chances on Saturday night mm. against the Roosters. There were probably three opportunities for them. Three uh, clear ones. Yeah. The attention to detail. Catch, pass, ball in front. Ricky Latelli wasn't even looking there. And once it, Valentine Holmes gets here, well, all he has forward. to do is go right foot. Right foot, he's under the post. Didn't back himself for some reason. You've got to say Tedesco done a Tedesco great job. A good job. But you've got to score those in the big games. And then this one, obviously... Uh, he drops the ball. He just stiffened up a little bit there, Matt Moylan. Um, and then the Luke Lewis one. Beautiful kick, once again, as you said, Freddie. Turned him around. Great work by Luttrell, but mm. Luke Lewis put the ball down. Yeah, I've got to hand that to Luttrell. Okay. You know, Luke Lewis is he's a seasoned campaigner. I don't think I've ever seen him do that before, so I've got to give a bit of credit to Luttrell there. So the oldest and most experienced team up against the youngest and most inexperienced, but they are coming off a win, unlike the Sharks. And it was a handy one, too. 27-12 over the... Warriors, and this is how they line up, the Panthers, uh, for the match on Friday night at Allianz. The first time these two teams have met in finals football. And you've got James Maloney, Joe. You know he loves this time of year. He's fantastic on Saturday. And while he's there and helping Nathan Cleary, uh, they're always a chance. I think they all fed off his experience. I thought Nathan and James Maloney's kicking game, mm. especially in the second period of the first half, the early kick just turned them around and took the juice out of the Warriors. And that was the difference. Um, the X factor for them is the dummy half, Sione Katoa. He set that try up. Some of his trickery around the ruck. Love He's got his a ball. great pass. No look pass to the other mm. side. This shut Jimmy up for about one minute, which was nice. <laughs> and, and the Warriors got the penalty. But he just turned the screws, Jimmy. And from, a, what, three weeks ago, it was a 40-point turnaround. Mm. They, you keep, they could catch fire. They could, be, they could get there. You keep thinking, though, the amount of games they give up a lead you think either they're going to turn around and start better or it's going to cost them. Yep. So and it's one or the other. This is going to be the big match. I imagine if you're Gus this week. Oh, yeah. This, uh, this this is, he's loving it. This is a big... Got rid of Moylan and then brought James Maloney. It's just, this game's got so much intrigue. The this player swap that's got everyone talking. Though, this tackle's it? 154. <laughs> wow. I've got to say, Jimmy, I uh, saw him the other night. He looks good. It's as, he needed that fortnight off, didn't it's he? It's as fresh as I've seen him look in a long time. He looks really good. I know his neck sore at the moment. He said he uh, had some work done after the game and he said it settled down a little bit. But mm. 
he looks really fresh. Um, so that's the best thing. I reckon it would have been lovely to give him a month off. You know, like they, if they had to just sacrifice him a little bit earlier, which they could have. But uh, he looks great. Yep, and not only uh, Maloney and Moylan up against each other, some former Panthers there and James Sigiaro. Uh, and Luke, Luke Lewis. Lewis as well, but Wade Graham would have been one too. But that's the matchup. Make sure you join us on 9 at 7 pm this Friday from Allianz Sudden Death Footy between the Sharks and the Panthers. Which way does it go? I want a win, I want a margin, I want a man of the match. I'll go Panthers by two, and my man of the match will be uh, Vili Army Kikau. I'm going to go Panthers by eight because I think Sharks win all the close ones. So I think Panthers are going to have to be more ahead to win, and I'm going to go Kikau as well. OK, well, that's final number one. One team season is over on the back of that and the other lives to fight another day. Same scenario for Saturday night, ANZ Stadium, St George Illawarra and South Sydney. Reynolds, can he put more pressure on here? A high kick, Vunavalu up. Oh, oh it's oh. been taken by Inglis! Inglis has got over the line, but has he got the ball down? He has eventually. But he goes to Graham, who went to Hunt. Flat Sims over! Gives it away to win it there and again. Sims has got another one. They're going to go over again. Tarek's got a hat-trick. The Dragons are firing at Suncorp. Yeah, cannot wait for this one. Two teams with a lot of history between them as we see the Dragons and the Rabbitohs go head-to-head -head on the back of pretty unbelievable matches for both teams from the weekend. The Dragons upsetting the Broncos. South. Well, there's only one point to the difference against the Melbourne Storm, and this is how they will line up, knowing that they must win. Yes, no second chances for this side on Saturday night at ANZ Stadium, where they're hoping for a very big crowd. That team in features Greg Inglis, uh, who's been in great form and looked very good of late. The Burgess boys, what do you two make of that side? Is it a team that should beat the Dragons? Oh, they should. Yeah, they they should, should beat the Dragons and beat them well. The Dragons, we know, have got injury dramas, um, especially to their forward pack. Looking at that team... I, well, I still think South can win the competition. I think South will play Melbourne. Look at their, their strength. Um, look at their forward pack. You look at the Dragons forward pack when we have a look at them in a second. We've got young Blake Laurie coming off the bench. Um, uh, they've got another young bloke off the bench. We'll see their side in a sec. But Adam Reynolds will be interesting how he is. He copped a bad knock. His mm. shoulder looked terrible. That was AC, yeah. There's yeah. one area of your body where you can needle and it just takes all the pain is your AC joint. Yeah. And that's, gonna why, have, that's why they're so confident. Well, he's going to have to yeah. tackle Tarek Sims. If Tarek Sims can pull off a performance yeah. like he did last week, we, you know he's going to be aggressive and he's going to be ripping into Adam Reynolds, but um, that's going to be a hard tackle. And then they've got Zach Lomax over on that side, the centre. He'll, uh, he'll defend up against Greg Inglis with Nano McDonald. So There's that Dragons team, Bradley. Yeah, Hame Sele, sorry, he was the other middle player. And Luciano Leilua, also on the extended bench, is... Um, and uh, uh, Ewan Aiken. Ewan Aiken. Yep. So it'd be interesting what they do with Ewan well, Aiken if he comes into the did team. Did you keep Zach Lomax in there, the way he played on the weekend? Well, Zach's a good defender. Well, he's young. And can kick. No, yeah. with no I widow. think I'd bring Ewan Aiken back in. And who's your goal he... kicker? Oh, no goal kicker. That's a conundrum. Yeah, that's an... So maybe, maybe that's enough to get but him think in Think about there. what uh, Ewan Aiken did. Maybe he stood Greg up in round one this yeah. year. Um, Has he been the same player that he was in the first half of the year, no. Ewan Aiken? Definitely not. No, the, the Dragons sort of went through that period, you know, but... Well, so their speed of line that got their aggression levels up, and James Graham initiates that. Um, yeah, he wore himself out at the point where he knocked himself out again, but he's going to have to do that up against the three Burgess boys this week, so he'll put himself under all sorts. He's a real... Um, he's their joker in the deck. Luciano, Luciano he's a good ball player. Too. Oh, Beautiful good ball player. player. Look at this. Youth just backs himself. Doesn't even think right. twice about it. This was a great game. Oh, this was a cracking oh, game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With 10 yeah. seconds but to go. Momentum, the wound. momentum this time of year is so important. Mm. They, uh, they've got a bit of momentum from that game. Look, everyone's... Ben Hunt's got to have a blind mm. I think that they'll He's go got after to have a South Sydney will go after Hunt. They know if they can break Hunt, they'll break the Dragons. And do you think the Dragons do, the, do likewise and go under Adam Reynolds, uh, go after him with, the, with that shoulder? Well, I mean, it's a great matchup this one. Can they get at him playing behind that, that forward pack? That's the key. Adam Reynolds might just sit back and just kick to the corners, kick to the corners and control it. Um, South Sydney's forward pack is far superior. The key to Adam Reynolds' game, and especially that left side attack, is how far he goes into the line. So he's going to have to take his knocks if his shoulder's... You know, on, he, on his, he's thinking about it, then it might just draw him back from the, the defence line a bit, which will make a big difference. Confidence is a big thing, and those two players are with plenty of it coming off the back of that weekend. All right, the big prediction from you two. Who wins, by how much, and the man of the match, please? I'll go, so I'll go South by 10, and man of the match, I'll go 
Cody Walker. Mm, I'll go south by 18. I think it'll be tight for 50, 60 minutes, but eventually south will wear them down. And my man of the match, I'll go Alex Johnson. I think you'll get a, a hat trick. Oh, look out. Where does that come from, hat trick? I don't know. <laughs> it's a football soccer thing? I don't know. Cricket. Cricket. Cricket thing? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Bowling. yeah. Cricket. You get three. Do you, what do you get a hat trick? You get three wickets, yeah. 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 It's got to be cricket. Uh, in cricket. Yeah. yeah, I got Matthew in the backyard, 1984, I think I got him out. What were the stumps? What did you um, used to use for stumps? My old man, he'd just pass out. <laughs> <laughs> Probably his up on an esky. <laughs> yeah, Gaz, you can be the non-striker. <laughs> Too good. You need three stumps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you better, you better the old man. Oh, we knew we were ready for anything uh, with our Freddie in the eighth program. Now, this matchup between the Dragons and the Bunnies, if it does go down to the wire, and if the Bunnies are behind by two, we're hoping G.I. doesn't do this again. There's five seconds left in the game. Here's the final play. It's got to go up. Greg Inglis puts a drop kick in. What's he doing? I don't know what he's doing. Bit of a race have. I don't know what was going on. Maybe a short. Take more of a notice of what the scoreline was. He thinks the game's level. It's 8-6, Greg. He thought the game was level. It is 8-6 and over. It's over, big buddy. Put it on the blooper reel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gee, it was good to watch, um, unless you're a Bunnies fan, of course, but I don't think he'd be doing that any time. No. So he'd be double-checking the scoreboard. Terry Lamb did that, I remember. Against, against Newcastle. Was it? It was against Newcastle at Belmore. Yeah. Uh, 1992. There, yeah. <laughs> that's my memory. Well done. Long term, very good. Uh, it's going to be a beauty, that match, uh, either way. All right, time for our finals flashback here on uh, Freddie and the Eighth. And we're going back to 97, but Joe, oh, no. we're not going to the grand final. Oh, thank God. We're not going to... Um, any match that actually involves the Knights. We're going to a match yep. that I don't want to see or relive. The Roosters with a win over the Bears, and the Bears had a habit of being able to do this, lose the unlosable in the end. 33. Look at the big jumpers. Uh, this is 21 <laughs> the extra time. The They're all so baggy. So, Ben Ike and Brett Dallas, a uh, couple of tries. Jason oh. Taylor, a couple of field goals. Bears are up 14 points to 12. And the Chooks hit back, Bradley. All of a sudden, it's 14 apiece. Well, geez, that was a nice play by Matty Sears. Great bit of work there. He was the best. Oh, good side, North Sydney. They, they sort of never... They couldn't hit the big games. Couldn't nail the big games, but they're always... Tell me about it. Oh, there you are. Hang oh, yeah. off to... Jeez, he was a play. Oh, Andrew, Andrew Walker. Walker. My oh, God. Great play. Andrew Walker would kill it today. So he scores two tries here, and it goes back to 14 all. And then upset Jason Taylor for well, they... a third field goal in this match. JT kicked three field goals. Three. My God. So they got to the front, and then I remember Adrian Lamb... Distinctly, he dummied to me. I was out of the back looking for the field goal. He just <laughs> plucked one out from dummy half. So they gave him extra time. Look at that. And went in extra time, we smashed him. Yeah, yeah. Sean Garlic, look at that. Yuck. Garlic's pies, there's your man. Yeah. Crafty little player he was. Tough, tough bloke. Ivan. Ivan Cleary. On the bus. Oh, <laughs> no video ref there. Go yeah. Scrammy. He's mate, a in those conditions, mate, he was, he was hard to. Garlic lamb. <laughs> <laughs> Only the Bears was to could go to extra time and then lose 33-21. No mouth guard there for you? I never wore a mouth guard. What's doing with the crowd? I would have thought there'd be more there for 11,000. Mm. They're waiting for Newcastle the next day. Oh, yeah. We got beat the week after by Manly by a field goal. Mm. There's plenty of field goals around there. Um, Andrew, yep. tall stories. Okay. Looking forward to this one. And your tall story... But I've been told I've had to restrict my stories. Right. Yeah. OK, so this one features PG. the super coach. Yeah. Um, so Wayne Bennett, had a, he, you know, he talks a certain way. And he used to call Danny Badiris, he used to say, call him Danny. And so it'd, instead of say Bedsy or Danny or Dan or Beds, he would call him Danny. So anyway, uh, one time we're down the team room and having dinner. And what Wayne, game was this? Australian team. Australian team. Oh. So Wayne walks in and everyone's having their, having their dinner. He goes, hey, Danny, how's the soup? <laughs> Benzi, yeah, Benzie's the world's nicest bloke. <laughs> Someone stole his wallet. He'd say to the bloke, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, I <laughs> got my wallet back. I just want my cars. Take the money. <laughs> so Benzie went, oh, oh, yeah, Wayne, soup's beautiful. And Ben Kennedy sitting next to him and said, you didn't have any soup. What are you talking about? Thanks and Wayne goes, day. well, what is it, Danny? <laughs> How's the soup, Danny? <laughs> Benzie goes, oh, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> but I said, mate, you're lying. You didn't have any. He said, oh, I watched Ogre over there. He was having it the way 
<laughs> why he was drinking it already, and I could see it was really good. And Wayne walked <laughs> off, sort of shaking his head. <laughs> Betsy's like, BK, he's going to drop me. <laughs> How's the soup, uh, Danny? Danny. Danny. Uh, so then that just lived on. For the next couple of years, we've been training, and we're even on the field, and he'd do something, and someone goes, <laughs> How's the soup, Danny? Oh, too good. Yeah. To this so day. that's that's my the rank story. Cash. I love it. I like Betsy. Like that's it. good. Okay. That's good. good. Yeah, he's a very nice guy too, Betsy. Betsy, well's nice. He's very easy to like. Sorry. Sorry, so, mate. Sorry. sorry, mate. Sorry. No apologies today. Thank you, Freddie. No Thank problem. you, Joey. The first ever, and hopefully not the last ever. <laughs> Freddie and the eighth. Appreciate your company. We'll hopefully be back next week. <laughs> Gary.